Hello and welcome to the Civilization Project. My name is Pratamesh and I'm your host for tonight. Today we are with Nikhil Malhotra, who is the Chief Innovation Officer at Tech Mahindra. And for the last many years, he's been working on some really interesting projects across AI, quantum computing, natural language processing, so on and so forth. Uh, he's also one of those very interesting, rare people who uh, share innovation with passion innovation. And we've talked a lot about colleges में आरएनडी होता है नहीं होता है colleges के साथ कैसे काम कर सकते हैं वगैरह वगैरह आप सब very excited uh, to talk to you Nikhil tonight and on that note welcome to the civilization project how are you doing sir million uh, thank you for Pratmesh and I parlay that uh, enthusiasm I think over the past I don't know how many years five or six years we've actually talked about all of these new things new concepts and and you've been part and parcel of the journey that we've actually taken through so very happy to be here yes thank you so much sir uh, super. So, uh, sir, before we go into the crux of today's conversation, probably we can start with uh, introduction of yours. Aap hi batao, sir, ki aap kya kya kar rahe ho, aapka experience kya raha hai, which will probably help us set the context for the remainder of the conversation. No, perfect. I, my name is Dekhil Malhotra, and I'm the Chief Innovation Officer for uh, Tech Mahindra. Also, take care of the emerging tech uh, business over there. Um, I have been a researcher of all my life. I think last 20 years I've been researching with AI. Um, and I think I've seen different formats of AI. Of course, AI today with chat GPT has completely changed and transformed the, the world that we live in. Uh, but I've seen different forms of AI when I started with Watson and, you know, working, playing, making Watson. And then also in, in terms of what AI is, um, I had, you know, 2014, I came back to India and I started something called as Makers Lab. It's also the R&D division and the innovation hub for uh, Tech Mahindra. And uh, we... We stretch across, you know, ourselves across four verticals or four horizontals, as we call it, in terms of technology. I think AI is one, foundational AI in terms of how do we make AI more sustainable? Because I think AI of today is not even sustainable to a certain extent. It's, it's using a lot of compute power and so on and so forth. How do we um, how do we emboss or in, engulf quantum into that um, AI journey is the second phase that we actually look in. Um, I think, but as you know, I think two or three years back, we also started Metaverse. So... That's also part and parcel of what we do within the Makers Lab. And I, fourth is, of course, robotics and certain other things. But I think the core and the theme remains the same. I think the vision is very clear. The vision is um, how do you how do you connect with people, uh, whether they are people from corporate, they are people from community, they are people from government, academia, so on and so forth, and create value with science and technology, which seems to be which seems to be not driven today. I think I think my the, the reason why I came back to India was that. How do I make, and, and this was my, this is not just the topic of this discussion, but I wanted to make India the R&D hub of the world, right? I, I think we've got potential, but uh, yeah. we somehow lack, uh, you know, how do we change? Yeah, that is, I think that is the biggest point which we share, right, in terms of commonalities. Uh, both of us have the same dream of looking at India as the global innovation hub, uh, right. because we can see that there is a lot of potential uh, in us. But then that begs me to ask you a question, ki fir kya ho hai? What, what is the state of R&D in India? Why are we not doing R&D? No, we are doing R&D. I think um, that's, a, that's a very pivotal question. I think um, I, it would be very wrong for me to say that we are not doing R&D. I think we are doing R&D. We are doing it in pockets. I think we've got um, colleges, we've got academia, um, we've got a lot of institutes, we've got a lot of corporates who have now spent uh, time in, in terms of R&D. I think we're not directing our efforts to the right point. I think, the, or, or I, I may rephrase it saying, we're not directing our efforts commonly in terms of what we are trying to do. And I think that is very, very important. Now, let's take the example of ChatGPT. I think ChatGPT, by definition, the paper came out in 2017. And, um, and for people who actually follow AI, the paper was um, attention is all you need. And this paper was actually opened up by Google DeepMind in 2017 to say look attention and transformers really make the difference in terms of what um a chat you know what what nlp or nlu could be done um the first hit that comes from from the world is actually uh from chat or or a company in us um i think india did not produce that first hit. i think I, I think we somehow lack um there are two or three things that we lack i think the first thing that we lack is the ability to take risk and probably produce a fruitful outcome for a larger populace in terms of what you want to do. And I think that's very important for us in terms of R&D. And why do I say this? I think in India is not just a vast country in terms of what it does, but it has also got a lot of fringe use cases, right? So 
tried driving a, a, a smart driving car or a self driving car in us i somehow feel um, they are so well settled in terms of the rules and regulations the self driving car could have done without even putting a machine learning or an ai base over there right certain rules and regulations could have made the car self driving um, look at india um, the moment you 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 even fathom to do a self driving car in india on our indian roads you suddenly you suddenly get the jitters right so and, and i think that's it and that's because there's a lot of things that come onto your road when you drive in india than when you were driving in us we are not able to catapult that data similarly let's look at language india is a land of about 20 24 mother tongues or 23 mother tongues officially and 16 45 dialects officially but indians speak 19200 dialects of unofficial and some of these dialects are actually spoken by people almost as about 1000 to 2000 people they are also in the extinct language system why can't we look at a a, a communal system which looks at all of these dialects allows every indian to speak to a machine in the dialect of their own choice it can't be just hindi it can't be just marathi it can't be just bengali there's so many of dialects that we speak even in marathi if i speak and, and we sit in pune prasme even in marathi there are about 14 or 10 different ways in which marathi He can be spoken, right? That's some of the oldest ones of yes, the yes. other Modi script that we that we wanted to. Now, question is, why are we not picking it up? It's all almost at the back of our hand. We have the data. We have, um, and when I say data, we have the you know we have the wherewithal to collect data. Data may not be as common as we get for English, right? Because our data is about um, is is very less on the digital front. But we have the ability to collect that data. We know that there are use cases that we can actually get it. And, and solve. Um, I think it's first things first is the persistence and the will to do this. Right? And we are not getting into taking risks. Largely, we have been a risk averse kind of a system. But R and D also requires a lot of risk, a lot of patient capital in terms of what we do. Um, um, you know, in terms of how we get. It. Second, I think R and D is also fragmented in terms of academia. It only you know Definitely. whenever you whenever you say research and development. the first thought process that comes to mind is oh must be an iit must be an isc must be an icer well i can tell you something kids in the uh, in the remote corners of this country right in villages are actually doing much more rnd than we could ever uh-huh. look at in the academy world right and they are actually trying to solve some very interesting problems that we are trying to do in the rural areas now now why do we why do we why do we categorize rnd as saying only in the colleges right and the moment you take an academic name corporate suddenly tend to go out and say r and d is hamare bas ki nahi bas ye r and d academy karega hum uska translation karenge well you could do more right it's basically a thin line that's been so the second is maybe looking at this word r and d and trying to picture it across the entire nation it's not just um, it's not just academy it's also the corporate responsibility it's the government's responsibility it's also kids responsibility or whoever is doing in in what part of it that's the second part and third of course is commercial funding funding to actually do r&d and i think that is where india lacks a lot where we have to spend a lot of patient capital in saying look r&d has a failure rate and i can tell you r&d has about 90% failure rate only 10% succeed but those 10% who succeed can be the 10 new unicorns or the 20 new unicorns for this country which can give employment to a large sector of people right so i think these basic three areas where india lacks um otherwise the will is there there are people there is brains um in india i think if we can cater cater to these three things um india would become the r&d hub of the world i agree i completely agree with you uh, and funnily aapne wo jo mention kiya na ki yaar r&d mein bahut sare projects to definitely fail honge aapne 90% 10% ka ratio bhi bata diya hai uh funnily sare vcs jo hai hamare they work with the same power law principle right that is yeah. only your 1% or 2% investments which are going to give you a return 80 90% fail hone wale even in that case then i uh, wonder ki funding ka problem abhi bhi kyun hai hamare paas when it comes to uh, really deep rnt uh, problems to solve uh, but anyway jo is apne beech mein ek do point ek aur bhi interesting kare the ki yes fundamentally we are a risk averse society yeah uh, but mere ko again कॉलेज वाला जो पार्ट है आई नो इट्स आर कॉमन शेयर पेन पॉइंट बट कॉलेज के साथ मेरे को वही लगता है कि दैट इज द बेस्ट पार्ट राइट कि कॉलेज में जो बच्चे अभी आज एडमिशन ले चुके हैं टू लर्न इंजीनियरिंग वी ऑल नो कि रोट लर्निंग इज द वे टू गेट योर इंजीनियरिंग डिग्री राइट नाउ एंड इट इज ओनली फॉर द डिग्री 
बिकॉज दैट डिग्री इज योर पास फॉर गेटिंग यूर फर्स्ट जॉब दैट्स इट उसके पीछे और कोई इंटेंशन है नहीं रहेगा बट वो हैंडफुल लोगों का रहेगा बट मोस्ट ऑफ द जनता इज डूइंग दिस बट एनी विच इज इफ दे हैव पेड देयर फीस टू लर्न इंजीनियरिंग और जो सिलेबस है उससे उनको वो नहीं मिल रहा है तो वाई कॉन्ट वी यूटिलाइज दैम फॉर दीज आर एन डी प्रोजेक्ट्स बिकॉज दैन जहाँ पे जो ह्यूमन रिसोर्स का कॉस्ट है आर एन डी का वो एक बहुत हद तक कट डाउन हो सकता है राइट एंड इवन इन टर्म्स ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर कॉलेज हैव बेसिक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर विच दे कैन यूज यूटिलाइज You are absolutely right, Pratmesh. And I think I'll I'll cut down to first point. You made a very interesting point, saying um, why isn't funding happening right for R and D when we go to VCs? I think that's a lack of trust as well. Let's let's okay. for for a moment let's close out on the Indian VCs as well. Let's say sure. there's a foreign VC or whatever. Let's assume that sure. there's a lack of trust. Right? Now what happens is I've I've got two kids. I've got a five year old and a ten year old. At the age of five or ten, uh, or you know at least. till 10 these kids are very very creative and the uh, and the preschools and the schools and the and the and the and the teachers that you meet says you know you should develop the creativity the child should come out with something new the child should have the ability to ask questions you know that's what our teachers have been uh, saying us in primary schools of course now things have changed in our time i think teachers were not like this the teachers were again you have to read abcd you have to be part of but not teachers have changed the pedagogies have changed i think i do see that change in the primary schools right so in the primary schooling right. teachers are um, uh, are also telling students and telling parents to make sure that the kids are creative make sure that they have a voice make sure that they have the ability to ask questions and we should not snub down their questions and we should have you know we should give them the open right to say look ask questions and we'll figure out an answer for that post 10 years you actually enter into middle school where i think the only purpose left in the indian academics is to cross 10th boards mein number laga dena chahiye whether it is 10th whether it is 12th every parent and every, almost 90 90 to 95% of the parents and the kids that have looked at i think either they are subjected to that extreme stress and tension saying mere bacche ke 10th ke marks aa rahe hain isliye either i will take a holiday from office and make sure that my kid actually gets that number or i should do some tuitions or i should spend some money now have a look at that i think the society is just revolving around that number value in terms of what yep. you do with that period of 5th to 10th or whatever you are getting right so the kid is being prepared till 10th from 10th to 12th as you rightly mentioned the only objective is to get into a good college right yes. so creativity started off between 5 to 10 or between 1st to 5th standard immediately lost itself or lost a little while the kid was actually trying to prepare for 10th and then completely was wiped out when the kid said look i now want to you know i want to clear 10th i want to clear boards i want to clear the 12th and i want to get into colleges come colleges the only purpose left over there is please finish your college in 4 years 3 years whatever you've got get a degree get a certificate and go to the next employer and ask for a question right so the moment these kids land up at our place the first things first that we ask them is we don't ask them silly questions of saying tumne java padha hai c padha hai i'm talking about a software industry right. c plus plus padha hai चलो कोड करके लिख दो चलो ऐसा करके लिख दो दिस नो पॉइंट इन डूइंग दैट राइट दे वुड प्रॉब्ली नो इट एंड इफ दे डोंट नो इट दे विल प्रॉब्ली गेन दैट नॉलेज टुडे अगेन आई 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 टेंड टू से चैट जीपीटी है उसको क्वेश्चन पूछ लेना वो बना देगा सीसी राइट 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 बट दी विल टू आस्क क्वेश्चंस सडनली हैज बीन लॉस्ट ओवर दिस पीरियड ऑफ टाइम ओवर दैट डेकेड दे हैव स्टॉप्ड आस्किंग क्वेश्चंस दे हैव स्टॉप्ड इवन थिंकिंग न्यू देयर इज नो इमेजिनेशन लेफ्ट they can't even imagine that they can sit in a chair on one day and maybe think of something which is so unique and so esoteric that cannot be done over there so i think that is what we are missing in the bigger way what we do okay. in terms of nikas what i am doing i think there are hundreds of interns that work with us over a period of period of time two things that we teach them is basically going into basics of what they have learned the basics of mathematics basics of physics principles basics of science third thing that we do is we give them the ability to imagine so we t- we tell them please go and watch star trek if you've not please go and watch films like imitation game where we are talking about turing and what he did because obviously this is our industry in terms of what we're doing but yes. let's say for example if you're interested in cars please go and watch formula 1 race in fact there are times when i actually go into the lab and i just open up a formula race car just to make sure that the kids around me are more interested in and if they are interested in cars there are hundreds of examples that i can take from cars to put it into it right so there's so many of problems yes. that i want to uh, mm-hmm. want to solve um then we tell kids to to read some books which are new right so 
I have a practice which I have maintained all my life. I cannot sleep unless I have read two or three paragraphs of some new technology that is going on in the world. And that's been that's been ever right for 10 to 15 years. I've had that, uh, you know, that practice with me. But I also tell people who work in the lab to make sure that you also keep that practice. At least read two or three lines. It could be anything. It could be a science fiction. It could be a memoir. It could be a biography. But please don't go and watch Netflix, for example, and watch a series. <laughs> you don't have to do a big okay. watch on the series. But at least on the, you know, you can still do it on the weekend. But at least if what we are saying is that please ensure, ensure that you do these kinds of things, right? Right. So India lacks a science fiction society. Okay. And we go, and we don't know that a science fiction society or a science fiction has become science for all of us in these years. It was because of Star Trek and the tricorder that Dr. Bones opened up that we had the first flip phone of Motorola. It was only because of Star Trek and the doors that used to open up and slide that we had the first sliding doors. It was fiction created into science. So unless we can preclude fiction for a kid um, going through these 12 years of education or maybe 16 years of education, we cannot have that R&D within this country. So you've got to create that fiction value, right? It's that imagination that will actually, right. you know, that, that's basically the precursor to the science that comes. So we lack that in a big way. And then, of course, the other two, three things that we that that I said that that we lack, right? So, so that's very. This is this is very very interesting insight that you've just had. Yes, science fiction, wala jo hai na, it's a very very interesting insight that you've said. Because creativity is the first step of. Uh, yeah. problem solving right when it comes to R&D activities and I think problem solve pro I think problem solver to hum log padna chhod diya hai bahut time pehle hum log hai uh, hum log problem solver hai for example agar hum problem doge to like for example we are the problem solver of the world Y2K happened we had good amount of youth we have good amount of people they could go and they could solve the problem hum log right. uh, hum log solution dhoon lete hai but hum log problem think nahi kar paate and I think for that you need imagination okay. So we lack that imaginative power in, term, in terms of creating a problem rather than solving a solution. Solve, solve kar denge. A problem no game solve kar denge. That's, that's okay. the approach, generally approach on the Indian side. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, it makes sense. I say experiment here. So there was this experiment which was done. Abhi uske logistic, matlab, exact details nahi uh, But they uh, hired some 10 people in, and brought them into a room. Usme se paach log jo the, wo scientists the, the, like professional researchers aur paach log stand up comedians the. Aur unko ek situation bata diya gaya tha ki this is the situation of this country. Abhi aapko innovative solutions batane hain ki hum log is uh, situation ko improve kaise kar sakte ho. Uh, you won't believe the startup the, the stand up comedians they gave 100x better answers than professional researchers per se. And I think that's wow. the power of creativity and that's the power of imagination, right? Because you go unhinged, startup comedians are unhinged. Uh, yeah. limitation nahi hota hai ki, haan, iske andar uske bari I'll give you I'll give you one interesting example, right? So there, 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 that's why I said I sometimes I actually tell people that a large amount of innovation is happening in the rural sector of the country and not the urban sector of the country. Because I think urban yes. sector we are too well well endowed, right? I've got laptops, I've got iPads, the kids are born with iPads and so on and so forth. I think in rural sector there's still a need, and that's why they're actually creating this value. Um I, I think, but you know this. 2020-21, when it was COVID time, we did some studies on the COVID molecule. You know, we 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 also did some therapeutic molecule around COVID. But but having said that, we were you know based on what we did, we were made a part of the Atal Incubation Center, right? So um, a very yes. good friend of mine was also the CEO of AIC Pune, and he said that why don't you come and you mentor some of the kids, right? So me and one of my colleagues actually joined that um, uh, meeting. Some very interesting kids from all across the country, right? They were urban and rural. But the most interesting part was these rural kids. I'll tell you two stories. Right? So one of the story is um, four kids um, in remote corner in Chhattisgarh travel 45 kilometers every every day to and fro. And um, one of these days, out of scientific serendipity, they drop harasag, lalsag, and bajra on a piece of land. That land sprouts weeds, weeds eye. These guys took the leaves, they crushed it and created it into water. They started giving this water to the people around and suddenly they saw that malnutrition in that region was 90% over with this water. So obviously because this is, this water okay. is very interesting, this uh, hara saag, lal saag, bajra, it's got all of those carbohydrates, etc. Now, this became a kind of movement in that small little place which was very remote. 
where people don't even know whether the place exists or whatever, and a small little village. Okay, UNESCO came in, they started presenting their ideas, and UNESCO was very, very happy. One of the kids was on the on the AIC panel, and he said, Sir, I Hindi, I Angrezi. Nahi so I said, No problems. You give me the presentation in Hindi, you make the PPT in Hindi. His job was to tell me that if I have Angrezi, aati thi, sir, to I have to do innovation in the world. Mein le ja. So I came that day back, I started thinking about you know, what he, he wants to do and wishes to do. Um, this prompted me to actually build that Bhamal, which was Bharat Markup language. Bhamal is a tool which is available free of cost, which you know that kids can use, you know, in their own times to code in the language, uh, you know, Hindi, Punjabi, Gujarati, and it's free. We actually give it as free. A lot of kids in India learn it. A lot of schools have made it as a curriculum. Bahamal happened, we were very happy. And I think that's a story that I've told um, multiple times when Bahamal happened. So the teacher who was actually trying to train them in the school, um, last to last year said, Sir, I have to meet you with And okay. same kids. And I will bring them into your lab. So they took a trip. Of course, they had some other trip. They took a trip about 17, 18 of these young kids who came to my lab in Pune. I, I spent the entire day with them in terms of what to do. Very, this was one interesting piece that the world found out. There were so many other interesting cases. There's a kid over there who's probably about 13, 14 now. When COVID, people were burning bodies. He was collecting ash. And he took okay. that ash and he started dropping that ash into his farmland. He's the kid with the... He's the only person at that time that I remember had the data that human ash can actually grow your fields by three times. No, this is imagination. Wow. This data is not available. And yes. these are kids who are actually coming out with these ideas in places which you don't even know that they have. There's one little guy whose only job is to look at a sky piece, like the, like the sky, and find out whether when the next, next asteroid is going to hit and whether it's going to come close to the Earth or not. This guy also gets paid by NASA with some amount as a value. Okay. And he's probably around 13 to 14 years of age. All he does is watches the NASA sky and says, look, I know that the pattern of stars are changed. Maybe this could be an asteroid. Now, that's real innovation and imagination. He's imagining um, and right. he's trying to do things. I think Indian R&D also needs this kind of imagination. We need to get that right. kid back, to get the child back into us. right? And so so that, yes. that's the whole idea. And I think R&D would just bump up. I agree. I agree. And I think there are a few good signals, right? So, we talk about Indians ke mein baat karte, to jugaad term use karte, ki Indians are very jugaad. Hote. And I think that's the biggest sign that we are we have that innovation potential, right? Because that jugaad again yes. is a local innovation. Yes, and I think jugaad is, uh, jugaad is a term which you refer to as a local innovation. So, for example, jugaad can be done to solve my problem in my area locality. How do you make sure that jugaad is more sustainable now? How do you right. make sure that jugaad goes across the world? I think that is... That is the push that we need from. But then that begs me to ask you a question. Ki agar ke chalo, koi kisi ne kuch to aise solution nikala hai, right? For example, I remember one person who had turned his bicycle into a water pump because there was electricity. Yes. Jata tha, right? Yes. So there are these kind of innovations which are probably very local solutions. Uh, but these may very, very, very much have some larger potential as well. Right? Because if there is electricity problem, then there will be many people who will live. Uh, is there any process, is there any uh, path available right now where we can go to the market tak ja sakte, you know, after going through the uh, uh, cycles of refining that product and so on and so forth. But is there a yeah, path, is there a process? There is a path. I think one of the biggest paths is, of course, AIC. You have to present it to some of these things that happen. One of the biggest things that they do is SIP, which is called Students Innovation or Student Innovator Program, which is basically lab to uh, or farm to lab or whatever and lab to society. So it's actually lab yeah. to society. So what do you do in whatever may be the part of this land in, in a lab, you can actually take it to society. So that is one area. Secondly, I think I would also like to tell people that if you're there, they're doing these kinds of jugars, they social media has become a great tool for them to actually market this, right? And you would have seen yes. in the past, I, I think um, within the Mahindra group itself, there have, there have been multiple times when our executive, you know, when 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 a lot of people have actually gone in and said, look, you know, Anand himself has said, this looks like a good innovation. Let me see what's going on. I think, and that is going to happen for all of them. It's not just Anand. And Anand's great in terms of what he does, right? He actually yes. um, makes sure that that innovation gets carried forward and it makes sense and so on and so forth. But but um, 
I think there are other people as well, like Anand, who are actually looking at that innovation, who wants to make sure that these uh, kids are there. Th those are two routes, and these are very informal kind of routes. So open up in social right. media, or you open up, let's say, for example, um, um, you know, go to places like SIP or AIC and say, I will plant uh, some some part of my solution into an utter incubation center or lab. And AIC, AIC, what I've known, they're very, very open in terms of taking these solutions from, you know, from farmland, from lab to present it to society. I think the third missing piece is the corporate. I think the corporate has to step in. Um, you know, when corporate finds out in terms of what's happening, um, and, and corporates have been doing that bit. Corporates have been going in and opening up places into second tier or three tier cities. And they're also encouraging a lot of these young kids over there. So I think the paths are opening up. I won't say that there's a streamlined okay. process. But the paths are opening up. And I think for my viewer, you know, for your viewers, um, India follows a TRL level, which you all know, a technology readiness level. And that yes. technology readiness level is actually divided into nine different stage, stages, right? So starts okay. from a basic principle, which is TRL 1, um, goes into technology concept, which is TRL 2, then goes into TRL 3, where some kind of experiments that you have taken in, TRL 4, where some component that you've built in, TRL 5, where there is some kind of breadboard validation of their component and TRL 6 where some system has come out of it. TRL 7 where a prototype that you can demonstrate to us is important and TRL 8 is where an actual system, you know, with, with kind of flight qualified systems that is being built in. And TRL light is, uh, 9 is actually flight proven, right, a uh, system that you want. Right. Now, what we have seen is TRL 1 to 4, a lot of people can do. TRL 4 to 7 is called the value of death. It is between four to seven when you have to take that prototype and you have to create it into flight ready. A lot of yes. kids, a lot of young innovators actually go out of that purpose for want of money, right. for want of, uh, for want of you know the the use case and so on. So or wo jugar wo jugar pay reh jata hai, or wo jugar right. hai. I think it is and, and at TRL seven the corporate picks up because now the okay. corporate says that TRL seven you are ready, you are good enough. And that's where you pick up and you actually start putting in more things over there. So I think one thing corporates may have to do is pick up from TRL 6, mentor mm. them and put it to TRL 7. And one thing is that people who are doing these kinds of innovations between TRL 4, they should reach their level to TRL 5. So the gap is only one. I think that gap right. needs to be closed out somewhere um, in the technology readiness. And I think that is where more and more innovations will start seeing the market as well. Got it. Got it. Uh, but then essentially, again, if I have to flip the perspective here a little bit, and if I have to, if I have to wear the corporate lens per se, for companies now, this opens up two paths of doing R and D, right? So one is of course doing your own in-house R and D, and second is acquiring new technologies and new products, probably from yeah. more grassroots than colleges and institutes, so on and so forth. Uh, one of the biggest undercurrents or biggest yeah, excuses. I, 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 I is, just want to sorry, but I just want to clear out one point. Yeah, I think yeah. companies cannot do R and D on their own. Um, I okay. think this, that's a collaborative function in itself. So the moment right. you say R and D, I, it's not just people sitting in that company's office that are doing R and D. It's also the academia where young students are connected. <clears throat> it's also sometimes right. the society where principles of design thinking and also you know um, other other facets are being applied. It's also sometimes right. a bigger community in terms of where you want to apply. So I think I think companies are doing r and d but i think the r and d structure is much more wider in terms of what we are trying to do right so for example you right. know what we did in agritech and whatever and we had to include a lot of people from outside yes. the world to understand agriculture as well we are not agriculturists we are not yes. doctors right so we had to do we had yes. to include them it's a more collaborative piece that we are thinking about. right good uh, thank you for saying this but that that was going to be my next question to you any which ways uh, that traditionally Again, I'll still rephrase the question and probably extend it a little bit more. Uh, but traditionally, that is the wisdom, right? Ki R and D in our zone chahiye, especially when it comes to critical yes. companies, uh, automobile companies, or pharma companies. Most of them have their own R and D uh, in house teams, like strong in house R and D teams, and then they have their path of acquisition. You uh, have a completely contrary uh, distributed model, right? It's a very decentralized yeah. model. And there's a lot of collaboration that again, as you rightly meant, as you just mentioned right now. What is what difference has this made for you in terms of your throughput of R and D efforts? So I, I think the throughput has suddenly increased. I, I'll tell you two examples. I think one of the one was when we founded out the therapeutic molecule of COVID nineteen. I think the only software, the only virus that we knew was a software virus before that. We couldn't right. have catered to a 
biological virus had we not had collaboration with people, right? So I right. think the first thing first was if we, we you know be able to understand what a virus is, a human virus. Uh, right. What do you mean by genome and some of these topics and discussions? Um, how do you really look at a virus, right? So after month, two months of study of talking to people who are in that field, we really found out that the virus is nothing more than a amino acid chain that combines together and can be taken as a language. And since we were natural language programming experts, we could actually break this kind of uh, language as well. Um, then again, after we discovered certain things, we wanted to test it in the lab. We don't have the ability to do, do that in the lab. We need partners. Right. So that's why we went into Bangalore and Hyderabad. You know, there were partners like Indra's. There were partners like Regent Biosciences who actually had done. Without a partnership model, I couldn't have done what we what we did. Similarly, um, I think a lot of people don't know, but we are the only guys or, or my lab is the only place where they have um, created an algorithmic version of the old Indian pancha or the Indian calendar just to predict precipitation. Okay. We're not agriculturists. We have nothing to do with agriculture. We have nothing to do with panchang science. But I think what the team did very wonderfully over there was study the panchang, understand what's the algorithm behind it, but then also connect it to so many people who are scientists in the region. There may be agriculture scientists. There may be real farmers who are actually doing this, and they would have more information than us. Um, so that's about bringing the community and collaboration and also the academia together, Pratmesh. In one common right. sense, what you want to do, right? So bring collaboration, bring the academia, bring the corporates, bring the bring the community who are actually doing this, right? right. Who are people who are good into all to bring it together. Um, it was for those reasons we have been considered by World Economic Forum as a case study in open R and D and innovation. What has that done is we know our part well, we know software well, but we don't know some of the other parts. I think that is where the throughput has suddenly increased. Number one. Number two, people coming from so many different diaspora actually give you some ideas which you have never encountered. Uh, you don't even know right. you have to do that. And I think that's the most <laughs> interesting thing for, um, for yes. innovation to happen. Uh, because we are yes. thinking on one line. Somebody else coming in may even think about a very different line. So that is something which is very, very different. Right. Right. No, I agree with you on that. Uh, serendipity, yahasi engineer hoti, right? Because you yes. expose yourself to so many more different people coming from different backgrounds and different diverse experiences. That there's so much, there's a wealth of diverse information which is always coming your way, and there's always a luck factor ki naya kuch kya aega, you also cannot predict, and you also don't know where it will take you. So I think that's the, that's the fun part of this journey, right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Right. But then again, just to play the role of a devil's advocate here, uh, while I understand that this has probably increased your capacity by manifold because you have specialized in your areas and then you connect partners as per the requirement of your projects. So capacity and scaling up becomes far more easier. Uh, yes. But then there's always a trade-off, right? So again, the conventional wisdom would be key. Because of this, there will be a cost escalation because there will be markups ad uh, there might be efficiency problem. There might be a security problem because you're sharing your secret R&D information yes. with so many partners. So there can be these three different risks associated with this open R&D framework, right? So well, how have you managed that? You're absolutely right. I think th th there's a there's a there's a balance or a dichotomy between um, how do you want to scale your innovation and impact and the impact of innovation to to the security and privacy that you want to do, right? And I think there, there, there has to be a balance maintained over there. So, for example, I think um, I, I, we are building on something very interesting, which is called Project Indus, right? Which actually came to us saying that, yes. look, we wanted to challenge in terms of building an India-based LLM. We wanted to do it from the scratch and so on and so forth. I don't think while I'm building that LLM grounds up as an algorithm, Getting data from people from outside the world is actually releasing any kind of security or private information over there. Right? So that's one part of it. I know people are getting involved into it, um, and there are hundreds of you know students and people who are involved with this in terms of giving data. I I think it's also the shared goal and purpose that we want to do. We want to make sure that India and Indians tend to speak in their own dialects with machines, which have been so underrepresented across the world. In terms of some of the things that are coming up, right? Chat GPT, Llama, and so on and so forth. Most of the times in these AI models, our languages are underrepresented. So it's kind of a shared vision. 
So I think it's about giving that shared vision as well to people saying, look, when we collaborate, there's a vision where we want to go. And then there's a balance to maintain in terms of what you want to do for the corporate part, which is obviously going to be close source with your customer and what you do want to do okay. for the open source. Even today, I would like to give open source the ability when I build the model, the ability to innovate in terms of on, on top right. of it. So more people and, and so on and so forth. <laughs> and I don't think that involves a lot of money. That involves only the will to come together, giving a shared vision and finding a process which actually makes a kind of framework for making them to collaborate with you. Uh, if the framework is not there, then yes, you have challenges in terms of data being lost in terms of privacy being lost in terms of security and so on and so forth but if you've got a right framework of r&d and open innovation right it's kind of a funnel um that that comes in then you are secure in terms of what you want to achieve and also the other person secure in terms of what he wants or he or she wants to achieve um, when they're getting into this project right and and corporates and indian it and corporates and i'm talking about indian it point of view corporates are the harbingers of this change. Okay. Uh, a lot of us, um, you know, whether it's Tech Mahindra or whether it's some of our peers, they have been dealing with this in their own different ways and different vehicles. For example, Tech Mahindra is a vehicle called Makers Lab. You may have our peer who have another vehicle in terms of what they do. The act is to act is to maintain that balance, whether we give ability to youngsters and other people to participate formulate joint relationships, formulate participation in innovation to create a common cause, an IP, a framework, a model, a kind of accelerator which we want to give to the customers and then be at the fruits of commercialization together. And then also um, a component which is open sourced or let's say open to the world to allow them to utilize it in the different ways. Right. So I think that's kind of vision which, which I think corporates today have. Uh, I think we need to do more on that. I, 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 I'm, my, right. my sense is that it's, it's happening, but it's not happening to that extent, and we we'll probably need to increase that effort. And increase that. Right. Uh, but that begs me to ask you a question. Uh, probably this is very early to make any uh, solid conclusion, but there are there are reports that IT sector is kind of slowing down, right? So US is facing some troubles, Europe is facing some troubles. So IT sector is IT services exports particularly is facing some downside. But then is there a case that we can make key age of additional manpower ke paas tha, which are which will probably have a threat of getting laid off? Uh, can we convince Indian IT corporates to divert those resources for R&D projects uh, instead of laying them off and then probably look for some higher yield products which they can start selling? Is there a case to be made? Can we convince them? No, I, I, I believe so. I think there is a case to be made. And I think and I think this is a this is a kind of business cycle as well. I think uh, we've all seen this. Um, I, I think we, we are, what we believe is that, or what I believe personally is that mid of 2024, you would see this improve in terms of what okay. we've done. I think the, uh, you know, the cycle that you've seen um, is um, is also because of a lot of geopolitical, um, you know, scenarios that has yes. happened across the world. And also certain things where IT is actually slowed down or, or appeared to be slowed down or whatever. But I think this this cycle this is a business cycle and that tends to improve. But I think your point is valid. I think some of these people, and we are trying to do that. I think some of these people uh, we are trying to utilize within this R&D projects because that gives them the ability to actually create a kind of um, a kind of IP for the company or an organization. Kind of it could be anything. It could be an IP. It could be a framework. This and um, and who knows? You know when this IP really gets into commercial mode, right? Uh, folks who have actually built this also get utilized. So I think that's the model that's being utilized. I'm sure that's being utilized across all companies, right? We also do that right. uh, from scale. And I think that's the right approach to do that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, but then again, uh, just to play that role of devil's advocate again, uh, especially when it comes to India, India may uh, self intent. Uh, we have a lot of good intent, but we also need a lot of incentive, right? Uh, sometimes a positive one, sometimes a negative one. Uh, but purely then talk about incentives. Uh, can you sh uh, shed some light on the commercial aspect of r in terms of up and you that 90% of the stuff is failed. Maybe 10% will be successful. But yeah, I think that's the products will be very low in the market. Pe jate. But then what is the commercial yield that you can receive on, on these numbers? Yeah, I think that's the that's the main question, right? I think I, I think in India, uh, the reason why a lot of people don't take R and D as a specific area or field is also because that the incentives are less. 
and I think that needs to improve. I think number one, um, uh, this is my earnest request that, for example, any organization that gets into R and D and fundamental R and D or, or transitional R and D, some kind of tax benefits need to be accrued to that uh, uh, that corporate or, okay. or organization, right? And and I think this used to happen, but this has stopped. I think because of certain reasons and so on and so forth. I think that is something that needs to be given. I think a proper check or whatever, and what, whether that is going to impact not just India but also the world. I think that should be that should be the scenario. Secondly, I think um, as I told you that R and D in India is also very fragmented and segmented. Uh, uh, researchers who are actually alone, who are actually doing it alone, or who are doing it as part of the institutions. Uh, there should be some kind of incentive for them as well to continue on with that field because we need them um, <laughs> they, in whatever yes. way that they're trying to do. And I, I, I think they should not yes. leave that field. I think a large part of our brain drain that from this country has happened because um, researchers find it much more incentivized, much more convenient um, as a mechanism to go to some of the other countries across the world, right? US, UK or whatever as a, as as, as as countries to do continued research. I think India has to make that ecosystem. And I think we are uh, uh, the current government and the prime minister is really thinking about it. I think uh, the, the, I, I was very happy when that Nara came out, which was uh, uh, Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan, Jai Anusandan. Uh, I think that is very important yes. because I think Jai research has to happen. And the only thing yes. is now things on the ground. I think that is uh, that is what we need. And hopefully that yes. should happen within this, within this country. We should be able to hold on our researchers. We should be able to hold on that R&D. That's the incentive yes. that we really need. Um, and it's not just right. academic researchers. You know, sometimes India, uh, we, we we tend to, I've, I've seen, I've gone to a lot of forums where a lot of people have talked about research who are college may, research who are academia may. I think research generally as research and R&D has to be given in terms of both corporate, academia, government, school. It has to be one common principle across what we do. Even today, our patent filing happens as if we are actually trying to fill up a manufacturing model. <laughs> we are not. It can't be, right? It, it, you can't be doing a manufacturing model for a patent filing. Well, they were, okay. they, there, is, there is a separate model for patent filing for manufacturing. <laughs> but a software patent filing is very different in what you do, right? I think those changes will make that change very, very close to... Uh, and. With AI coming in, with technologies coming in, and I can only talk about technology because I've been in that field for the last 23 years. You would see more and more people want to delve in, jump in, in terms of making AI sustainable, in terms of making AI more compute friendly, in terms of making technology more accessible, more even explainable, more responsible. I think with the kind of data, data bed that we have, and I won't call it a data frame because we still have the bed. We have immense amount of data bed available to us. Yes. yes. I think most of this can be research done in India. Most of this can be researchers from India doing that. But they need that kind of cushion for them to go forward. They right. don't want themselves to be branded. If you get connected to a, um, uh, you know, to an academia, then only it's called R&D. If you're a corporate, then it's not considered R&D. You're not doing anything. If you're an individual guy who's doing, let's say, for example, you want, you're not doing PhD, but you're doing your research. No, no, you're not considered a researcher yes. because you don't have a PhD degree. Degrees are right. no longer a matter for people to do research. I think PhD, um, I would also go on a limb and say that, yes, PhD means degree of philosophy. Uh, you have a philosophy, <laughs> of, of doing, but you don't have the practical intent of doing things, right? So in terms of that, that is Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I think and that's the funniest part, right? That we science, 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 it's so much fun. Uh, but again, throughout the journey, we have to philosophy. Uh, as you rightly said, yeah. Dr. Yeah. Of yeah. philosophy yeah. is yeah. And, 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 and we can't bucket research, right? Because you are an academic researcher, you are a corporate, you are always a commercial business. It's not like that. The commercial business wala hai right. from the corporate is also doing equal amount of research, right? Uh, imagine this, the corporate guy who's actually a sales guy sitting in, let's say you are trying to do research of his customer, trying to understand what his customer needs, trying to understand what the ecosystem needs. That's also research for me. So at the end of the day, right. it all starts from basic principle of hypothesis in scientific terms. And that hypothesis has to be validated by doing some yes. experiments. Whether you yes. are in sales, whether you are in IT, whether you are in tech, whether you are in academia, whether you are in school, if you follow those principles, then you are a researcher by all means. 
you're trying to yes. get to something new why that division that you need to have a phd so that we can call you a doctor or a researcher <laughs> <laughs> yes true 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 completely true अब देन अगेन ज़ूमिंग आउट मेरे को वापस कॉलेज की तरफ जा नहीं उसके पहले एक एक सवाल है आपने बीच में गवर्नमेंट का भी मेंशन किया था कि गवर्नमेंट की भी गवर्नमेंट का भी रोल है इसमें एंड इफ यू रीड द रिसर्च रिपोर्ट्स आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ आर आर एन डी फंडिंग इज ऑल्सो गिवन आउट बाई गवर्नमेंट इट सेल्फ जो भी हम लोग जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन परसेंट जी डी पी का डालते हैं उसमें से आई थिंक एटी परसेंट गवर्नमेंट ही गवर्नमेंट इन्वेस्ट कर रहा है बट देन डू यू नो ऑफ एनी स्कीम्स एनी पर्टिकुलर मैकेजम्स थ्रू विच गवर्नमेंट इज फंडिंग दिस आर एन डी प्रोजेक्ट्स आई रिमेबर देर वॉज समथिंग कॉल डी एस आई आर बैक देन जो फंडिंग स्कीम्स आई थिंक डिपेंडिंग ऑन द एरिया फॉर एग्जाम्पल द गवर्मेंट इज नाउ ओपन अप नेशनल कॉन्टम मिशन दिज अ नेशनल ए आई मिशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ वॉट आर डूंग एट लीस्ट फ्रॉम द सॉफ्टवेयर परस्पेक्टिव दैन देर अ सेमी कंडक्टर मिशन आई थिंक द गवर्मेंट इज डूंग इट्स जॉब आई थिंक एंड दैट्स द पॉइंट ऑफ गवर्मेंट द गवर्मेंट जॉब इज टू एक्चुअली सेट अप अ पॉलिसी गेट सम फंड एंड डू दैट आई थिंक वॉट what the request to the government is also to ensure that these funds that you collect need to need to go in equally in terms of either rebates or whatever to both corporate as well as academy so i think a lot of research right. happens through academy we completely agree with that because that's where the intent of the research starts but the practicality right. of research finishes in a corporate so unless yes. these two things are bound together you will always have fundamental r&d and you will have less people doing fundamental r&d but you would have Yes. even fewer people doing translational art so people would not yes. translate that research into anything right that connection i think somebody asked a question taruja over here has asked a question saying that's the link between the corporate and the academic sector it's not just right. about taking students from academia and putting them into corporates giving them internship giving them a job but it's also that intent of passing through some of the work that the academia starts into corporate or vice versa where a big bridge can be developed between the two i think that's the important right, thing right. now both needs to be incentivized academia needs to be incentivized by these schemes the corporate needs to be incentivized by some other taxing schemes right so whatever whatever schemes that the government comes right, out right. i mean no position to talk right. because i'm no. not even uh, i don't even have the skills to no talk sense. about it but but some some tax frame framework for right. corporates some framework of incentivization to academia and ability to combine them together right if they combine together right. then more incentives i think that is important from the right right fair enough fair enough uh, so tarojo ma'am actually is one of my uh, professors from my alumni college uh, pvg ah, okay uh, so but even we were discussing the same point right so and then i had this uh, thing in my head abhi for example engineering ko jitne bhi bachche admission le rahe right so they are doing these yearly projects so there's one small project that they do in the third year and then one big project in their last year so me and tanuja ma'am were just discussing the possibility of uh, these students doing some more long term projects maybe they start in the second year itself right and then i had a question for you ki agar aisa kuch system aata hai where they start working on some life projects earlier in the journey waha pe industry ke sath collaborate karke kya we do kya can we do some more r and d work because you have those kids for larger yeah. period of time Yeah, yeah, we can. We we do exams, right? I've got interns from almost all over the country who are working with me in the lab, and they're doing R and D. Some of them are doing three months R and D. Some of them are doing six months, and some of them go longer. Some of these are our projects, and right. some of them what they think. So these are obviously a collaboration. I think what we what what I wanted to compare with this was was something like what DARPA does in US. Um, right. Why did autonomous cars come to? Um, and let's let, let's not worry about the let's not worry about jurisdiction or whatever. but why did autonomous right. cars come in san francisco and bay area um, and they are already plying on the roads well this challenge was in 2002 the darpa came out and said um, you know it's a challenge make sure that your cars actually run out autonomous 2002 to till now 15 to 20 years the government has spent some amount of time and effort in making sure colleges and academy and companies combine together to solve that challenge the challenge is a future right. challenge that challenge got solved there obviously some commercialization and money involved over there companies got formulated out of people who got into that challenge and today we've got companies and their cars actually running on to the roads i think that's the kind of example that government needs to set in india as well um and i right. think work has started happening there are a lot of these projects which are going on now um, more needs to be seen in terms of and that's where right. corporates would get it, right and corporates and academia would together come in it's a difficult problem to solve it's a future problem Both have both see some advantage from a corporate standpoint and the academic standpoint. 
and then you enter into that challenge. Right. Got it. Uh, this actually brings you brings us to the crux of the conversation that I wanted to have. Uh, so again, I had mentioned this to you. Uh, I'm running the series called Legend of for Sale. Uh, elections are a Lok Sabha ke. Uh, okay. And I know that most of us now would have already assumed that Kaun jitne wala elections. Uh, but even in that case, uh, again as a student of decision making, right? Uh, these elections are the way in which we as a society are making that decision that who is going to yes. run our country for the next five years. And even though the result is kind of predictable as of now, uh, it is still a very important point in time to state our demands. Ki bhai, hum log ke problems abhi kya hai? Or hum log ko ye solutions chahiye. Right? Because if you look at what is happening with the farmer protest or what happened yeah. with the reservations protest, it was a section of society making their demands and getting the na- nation state ready to, you know, making that decision. Ki, ye karenge, nahi karenge. Whatever it is, negotiation, chal rahe, whatever. <laughs> I think that is something that we should also uh, learn from these events and probably try and utilize. Ki election ka time, hai, sare parties, ke social media teams, high sensitivity. Pe chal rahe honge. Can we put out these kind of problems and these kind of ideas so that the state is you know, uh, notices these problems and provides some solutions? So one of the items that I had proposed was to install uh, technology transfer offices in all the colleges and universities. Correct. So just every college make training placement office. What is it? What is it? Every college make TTO or tech transfer office. Yes. You know, which can be the be that some colleges be... started doing it in, in in bits and pieces. Yes. Right. But then if we ha- if we imagine that national grid of TTOs all yes. across the country, which connects all the, you know, education institutes, universities, industries, all of these missions can be connected directly. Because for example, you have a semiconductor ka mission, so you have some projects in this college, in this college, in this college. Mm-hmm. This entire collaboration can be synced using this network of TTOs, right? Yes. Uh, so I just wanted to ask you, ki, what do you think of this idea? Is it dumb or not? No, this, is, this, is, this no. is absolutely good. I think that is important. I think this is a good ask because I think um, technology placement or sorry, technical placement, training and placement, all of those offices are there. But technology transfer offices are not there. I think that is one demand. Yes. I will put one demand from my side. Make a science fiction society of India, SFSI. And, and once you do... Sorry, sorry, Patma, you're saying... If you can do that... I think I'm in, I'm in on this. Yeah, yeah, if you can make a member and, and these TTOs, the technology transfer offices should actually directly be connected to the Science Fiction Society of India. They should look at science fiction and try and solve today's science problems. I think that is the most important thing that India needs in terms of imagination. We are still, we still run on borrowed technology, if I may say. We are consumers. We are not producers of tech. And we yes. need to be producers of tech in terms of r and And that's important. Too. I, I agree. I agree. Uh, if you remember, a few medical devices, maybe we were doing some work post-COVID, right? So at time, I had come across these reports. We literally import more than 80% of all the medical devices we consume. Like this is literally the technology which is the difference between our life and death. And we are importing 80, more than 80% of these medical devices. I was... I don't have words. I'm, I was so shocked back then. That's right. That's it's 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 insane uh but yeah that is that is what i was thinking and one more thought was ki agar ke chalo, and i think uh, i would love to ask you this aap jab in college ke ke kaam karte ho in terms of r&d projects right so abhi ek complaint hamesha hum sunte ki engineers are unemployable hai. uh mm. they are job ke liye ready nahi hai ya unko unke paas jo skill set hai wo kaam hi nahi aane wala industry mein but when these students are working with you on your r&d projects do you see a visible change in these parameters the, the, I, so, so first of all, I think that's a broad sweeping statement. I wouldn't agree to that. Um, I think okay. some of the colleges that I've worked with, I think students are really nice. Um, also, it's an individualistic trait. I, I don't see that this is a college problem or this is an academic issue. Yes, la, you know, you and I would not, I, I would not make a broad sweeping statement about 60-60. This is a 50% ratio that I've seen. 50% of students I found exceedingly well. Uh, they okay. understand. They even understand where they have to go. 50%, yes, you have to push them to make sure that, you know, whatever they want to do over there. But what I've seen and what we do, you know, very persistently in the lab is to make sure we... My normal process is, I come to the lab in the morning or go to the lab, so whatever interns are sitting there, I ask a scientific question. I don't know the answer. 
sometimes it sometimes they answer sometimes they don't but it gives them the ability to look at what is going on in the future right so that's what we do but what we do is we make sure that every kid when he goes out of the lab learns at least the basics for what they were there and tries and produces it in a kind of translation way for a project which they can showcase to the world outside in terms of what they have done um i do not know whether and i have not checked prathvesh right some of some of these kids have come back to me some of these kids are now in very good location you know across the world and they are doing you know great with companies the big fives the big five consulting and so on and so forth so hopefully they are doing well um we have not checked them right. after that but i am assuming that by giving this structure of asking a question of why what how and making sure that these three questions get answered in their lives for anything that they want to solve it we are probably making them ready for the future so they should be okay when they get out of the lab right so otherwise i think i would don't want to make a broad sweeping statement some engineers non employable hote hain ya engineers acche hain i think there are good kids everywhere and there are kids who need a little bit of support everywhere as well so i think i of course that's of course they would i absolutely love your why what how wala framework i think that if so i have to be very honest with you ye hum log ka kabhi baat hua nahi so this is like a very eerie coincidence but this is one framework which i use every day in my life main jo bhi karta hu uske piche ka why what how mere ko pata hona chahiye and even when i've been a part of teams per se when i'm lead, i was leading teams it was the same framework that i used to you know use ki all of us should be on the same page when it comes to why Play yeah, and it. also also no no the my second point to them persuasion is to make sure that they actually tell it with absolute um uh, what do you call it, courage even though they sound that it is stupid yes like the jaise tu aur main baat kar rahe the is there a framework for a time machine when i want to build a time machine is the question that i want to ask right yes people may think you're stupid you're nuts there's no technology it doesn't stop you from asking that question yes so please go ahead and ask and voice your concerns is the is the other thing that we tell them. yes your know, time machine ka topic nikla hai to i can i can probably make this absurd claim ki yes at least 70% of the technology needed already exists yes yes <laughs> <laughs> at least 70% to hai baki ka bhi aa hi jayega <laughs> no no i agree uh, and i think anyway, that's a separate conversation uh, that we should have exactly exactly ye thoda sa privately karenge stream pe shayad uh, kabhi aur karenge ye wala topic Uh, but anyway, last one last question from my side. Uh, in your view, over the next five years, ten years, uh, or maybe even a longer horizon, uh, considering R and D life cycles, maybe ten years, twenty years, thirty years, uh, how do you think R and D sector is going to shape up? What are the new opportunities which are going to come up? And in general, what is the horizon that you see right now? So I think in my my perspective, and I will only talk about tech um, because I am from that field. I think tech in R and D yes. is going to largely settle itself into two or three regions, right? So number one, the trend is going to be AI. Um, you will see this over the past five to ten years. You will see some hypes that you are seeing for Gen AI, but that hype will slowly, you know, settle down. And once the dust settles down, the question is going to be: Can is AI sustainable? And um, an answer to that question is it's not. um you know any single model that you want to do for a large language model to train at this point in time um in, you know for training itself there's been a mckinsey report saying it actually costs um it actually creates 57 times more carbon dioxide than your flight from air to let's say um, you know delhi or any other city of 2 hours so um it's not sustainable because obviously it's actually using a huge amount of compute power and it's actually spewing out a lot of carbon so a lot of effort is going to go in into making sure that ai is sustainable so that's one field that students should actually look at getting into or the r and d is open um, over there um <clears throat> second field is quantum as we all know i think i don't need to say more but this field is actually opening up in different ways it's not just computing but communication sensing security they're all areas which are opening up the indian government is also opened up in terms of what they want to do with national quantum mission so that's an area where r and d would happen at least across the world it's happening india has a has a fair share under the sun in the coming 3 to 3 uh, to 4 years in terms of what india can do um i think robotics is going to become a household structure now in the next 5 to 10 years or the decade um and we are already playing with robots right so for example you are you know in during covid times also 
we had those machines, I Roombas and whatever, who were actually cleaning it. Yes. Not to that extent, but we actually got our work done. But this robotics yes. is actually going to enter into our household in a very big way in the next uh, 10 years or so. A lot of talk in the next 5 to 10 years are going to be, how do you make, how do you value precision over any size? How do you value, um, how do you value the governing portions of AI? Or technology how do you make technology more responsible how do you make technology more ethical these are all areas which are wide open for research at this point and then and, and it's bound to grow um and um, r d and it makes perfect sense for r d to happen in india because we've got all the data back uh for us to actually do that right so so my request to anybody who's listening to this who's actually trying to get into r d field there are n number of cases if you are from technology and then there are other things right so electric vehicles, um, what kind of vehicle and vehicular transmission needs to happen, smart cities, how do you build smart cities of the future? The list goes on. It's endless in terms of what you right. What do you think about space travel? Space travel Kulega? Like space travel Kulega? Space travel would be, um, I, I, was, uh, I was talking to my kid uh, the other day, was, yeah, my son, um, and he himself said, I don't think we would need drivers when we grow up. I said, you're right. Probably we will have more um, autonomous driving cars or maybe a robot sitting in your driver's place and so on and so forth. Um, right. but, you all, but I also told him, I said, you never know, your grandkids may be doing space travel. True, uh, true. The next holiday destination would be Mars or whatever. That, that you know, <laughs> so I think that's a field which is absolutely open. Right, right. Superb, superb. Uh, Let's take audience ke questions. Le le. Ah, please. Done. Uh, audience Guys, if you have any questions, please feel free to share them in chat. Uh, there's a couple of them which I've received on WhatsApp. Maybe we can start with them. One message is that if I have a job for R&D, then what should I do? Where should I approach? So on and so forth. No, I think I, I, if it's a job that you're looking for, join a corporate firm and then try and figure out what their R&D does. Right? So every corporate firm today would have some kind of R&D, some kind of innovation function. Uh, try and get there. And then try and make R&D more useful and fruitful. There's no special way. So I would not go out of the mm -hmm. limb and tell you, PhD kar lena to R&D ban jaoge. Aapne shad kiya hoga, shad nahi bhi kiya hoga. With an engineer's degree um, and with, let's say some some part of postgraduate, if you want to do, or if you, even if you don't want to do, even with the engineer's degree, um, it only requires your mind to shift to a certain way in terms of what you're thinking on R&D. Um, and if you have that, I think any organization that you join will be able to do that. Right. Got it. One more question is, is there patents in the Indian market? In the Indian market, but uh, world over, I think patents are important. And I think that is important. That is, and I think that is another, that's a very good question and a very important question. <coughs> and important. I think India also need to raise that value for patents as well and patenting, right? So for us, as, as at least as Indians, who's actually a researcher who wants to do an IP, who wants to create a patent, Indian patent should have the same value or nearly the same value as you are trying to fill it for the world as well. So I think that's a very, very important point. And that's an important point that we should also raise out. Uh, how do right. we create the Indian patenting system in such a way um, that uh, it has value uh, in terms of right. a, a, a kid coming in and creating that? That's right. a good question. I, I, actually, have, that. <laughs> I actually have a follow-up question for you. Uh, in the last couple of years, I've, I know that you have, you have you've also been a, uh, on a patent filing spree. Uh, but you both been filing patents file karte aa in your experience has the system improved uh kya aapka experience improve hua hai kuch change indian system has improved a lot i think we can file a patent at least the provisional one pretty quickly and i think that has okay. improved us I improved um there are a lot of good indian firms who can now check whether the vi viability of that patent is, is uh, you know across the world is there um i think the value of patenting is not improved. Or the patent has not okay. improved that. I think that is what the earlier question was also about. I think that needs to be. Yes. Yes. Uh, we have one more question. What do you think is the biggest technology area for India where we can lead the world? Um, I think the biggest technology area that India can lead the world is um, is AI, an application of AI. At least in today's hype cycle. If you, okay. if you think two years, three years down the line, India should lead the world in creation of smart cities. Um, and we are not doing enough. And when I say smart cities, I, I would call it smart city, but I would say cognitive cities. Cities that actually, because we are the first ones to get most hit 
in terms of the city infrastructure buckling down so cognitive cities and ai as a combination together should be should be two areas the third area is now an indian researcher there's a need for indian researcher to define a new algorithm for ai it's been six okay. decades that the algorithms have not changed time for an indian researcher to actually come out and create a new algorithm which makes ai much more sustainable can you elaborate a bit on this yeah because i th- I, i think the algorithms that we have been running for ai have been centuries old right and if, if if i may say centuries it's just 60 60 years at least old six decades we've okay. been using them we've been mollycoddling them um i think there's a lot of research happening in the world in terms of um getting inspiration from human brain getting inspiration for making okay. them small getting inspiration for making them more sustainable um i think that's an area of research which i think indian researcher should get into there for two reasons we have the we have the problem which is large data unregulated right unrestricted not covered into digital being that's i think that's one way in which indian ecosystem has the second biggest advantage to us is we we know where the data actually goes wrong we know the fringes of the data now right. with this amount of large data that india produces there is time for us to make sure that that data can be easily ingested and an algorithm can be easily applied without going through all the past 60 years of algorithmic history that we have uh and we do this every every single day with our human brain why can't we right. have a human brain inspired kind of an ai system that can do this um right that, that i think india should lead as a process right but then again this begs me to ask you a question kyunki uh, even jamil ka jo bhi controversy hua uh, ya jitne bhi ai models aa rahe uske hallucination aur biases ke jo bhi problems expose ho rahe uh now again all of this is information being processed right at the end of the day uh via different models uh what i wanted to ask was ki ye biases aur ye jo problems hai ye to normal human ka bhi feature hai like if we right. analyze the society right now even they have those same biases right. and when we talk about philosophy right so when we talk about any of the philosophers either greek philosophers or buddha or any of these philosophers these philosophers essentially were talking about how do we uh, improve our consciousness and work with those biases right avoid start avoiding those biases look at the world better understand the world better uh, make deeper connections with the world by understanding the context and subtext and not just the you know superficial words that are being uttered uh, now when we talk about india's library of philosophy we probably have a very diverse and a very rich philosophical yeah. base to our society uh can we utilize or are we already you start have we already started utilizing this philosophical base uh to probably look at we, improving we, our we have, further yeah but i i think i think the problem is much more deep rooted with me in terms of what we do right so for example the moment we call it bias um a you said that humans have biases b as a culture you may have a certain bias okay and what is biased for me may not be biased for somebody else so maybe what is ethically wrong for me may not be ethically wrong for somebody else so i think there are boundaries of distinction in terms of what you call as ethicality right so i think that is number right. one uh now the that that's one problem i, I think there and and these biases will never go out because human beings themselves are biased the only thing that we can do is make sure and that's where i was saying that the research on ai is when you say ai is explainable uh it should be easily easy for me to explain why the algorithm received an input and why it gave me an output for example if i go to an atm machine and i file in my effort and say give me the loan it asks me for my personal education it asks me for my previous life and it says or my wife and kids and whatever it says okay loan granted pratmesh goes over there and says no no but i am a phd but your loan is rejected why did the system reject your loan and approve my loan a certain bit of transparency in terms of that ai model if it is there i think these biases anyways would filter out right a lot of work is already going on in terms of biases now now come now begs the question i have removed ethicality or i have made my system ethical to an indian terms and conditions i pass on this data as a model or as i pass on this data as a system to let's say rest of the world which may be us europe the question that i ask is a transmission of data from one point to other 
there has to be some international law in terms of doing that. But when that data reaches US, is it ethical in terms of what they think as well? Right? So it needs to change accordingly in terms of their ethicality. And, and is there a book? Is there a super book that does this? Well, there are hundreds of them. Right? You can take any religious book and they are talking about ethicality. Uh, they are talking about making sure that you are responsible, your behavior is responsible. Should we pick up those extracts and make sure that AI is there? there? Yes, why not? The, that's a research area at this point. Right. There's a there's a topic called deontic model mm -hmm. of AI or deontic principles of AI. There is some research happening in Austria and Vienna looking at Sanskrit books and they're trying to look at Sanskrit books to actually create ethical based AI. Begging, mm -hmm. Only asking a question that if a self-driving car hits a human being on the road, is it the car that needs to be penalized or is it the human that is crossing the road that needs to be penalized? Just the simple question is being answered by deontics, which is actually being picked okay. up from Vedic science. Please okay. understand, this is Austria, this is Germany, nothing's happening in India. Q, that's the pain point. Correct. And the reason for that is either people have lacked that imagination or either people are not sufficiently, um, what do you call, reimbursed in terms of when they do research and so on and so forth. So I think that is an important thing. Similarly, we today hold the language which has not been deciphered in the script. People have just said it. Right. Yes. There, there, of course, there are, there are some there, there are some good 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 scientists and AI researchers like R. Rao who has said that Indus is a script and he has given some philosophy for you know deciphering Indus script. But Indus as a script has not still been deciphered. The only known old script that has not been deciphered because we don't have anything as a as a reference material for Indus. Why can't an Indian pick up that research? We don't have the Rosetta Stone. We we don't have the Rosetta Stone for for Indus. But these are areas which we need to get in. And this would not just solve a problem for, let's say, an old time sake, but would also give us the future algorithms as well. So that's what we're about. Of course, of course. Interesting, interesting. Uh, okay, I think there are no questions here. Cool. Uh, I think questions ke sari are done. Hai. Uh, is there any parting thought which you would like to share? Before we call it no, up. no, I'm good. I think I hope this message carries forward that India now needs to bring in R and D, and I think this also needs to go in in terms some of the way that you are trying to bring in, um, you know, the the technology transfer office or the way I want to look at it is in terms of the uh, you know science fiction society of India. I think hope that message passes yes. on more and more people join in so that we can actually have that uh, running in. Definitely, definitely. Uh, perfect, Nikhil sir. Thank you so much uh, for being a part of the civilization project. I hope you had a good time. I absolutely had a very brilliant time. Uh, and I'm very sure that you will travel again and travel again. Probably we can look at some specific themes as well. Uh, dive in deep into just, just some specific market areas. But any which ways, thank you so much for joining. Uh, I know you are running a very tight schedule. All the very best uh, for your all the projects that you're doing. Uh, hopefully we'll meet sometime very soon uh, and to all the audience members to all the viewers who are watching this video uh, thank you so much for watching I hope you have received some practical insights on what the issues are in the innovation ecosystem how you can be a part of it and how can how you can play a role एक चीज पकी है कि innovation ecosystem अभी जो भी हालत में है उसको हम लोग को improve करना ही है and we also have a role to play when it comes to improving the same this ecosystem. Sirf uh, government ke bharose hum log nahi ruk sakte because government also has other priorities. So they will keep on doing things at their pace. Uh, irrespective of that, elections ka time hai. Uh, log aapke paas aayenge aapka vote maangne ke liye. Toh jab wo log aayenge aapke paas vote maangne ke liye. Please aapke maange rakhiye. Uh, Main meri wale rakh raho through this series called Legend of For Sale. Uh, you'll find relevant links in the description below. Please do watch out these presentations that I'm putting out. If you agree with these policy proposals, please uh, do sign the change petitions. There is one change petition and a policy draft attached to all the videos for your reference. Once again, thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Nikhil, sir. Thank you, all of you. Good night, and I'll thank see you, you soon. Take care. Take yes. care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night.